Hey everyone, Edward here with another little uh, video review and just wanted to actually do a comparison of the Surface Pro 7 and of course the Surface Pro 7 Plus which I actually did a review, go ahead and check that out. I'll go ahead and check out the original review of the Surface Pro 7 that I did last year covering uh, pretty much everything I possibly could about this device. So I want to do actually a little bit of a comparison between the two of them. There's actually going to be very little uh, change in details here but there are quite a little bit of differences that I definitely should go ahead and point out. And uh, previously, I actually did a comparison video of the Surface Go 2 and the Surface Go 3. Now, those two tablets pretty much were almost identical with the exception of just the CPU and maybe one or two other teeny-weeny little details that are hardly, no hardly noticeable at all. Um, the battery life seems to have uh, been a little different there as well, too. But over here, there's actually quite a bit of a difference. And one thing for sure, I can definitely tell you just off the bat because I know many people are curious. And that's probably why they were checking this video out. Battery life on the Surface Pro 7 Plus is definitely a little bit higher. And uh, you're wondering, well, how do they go ahead and achieve that, considering that basically both of them are using the same kind of chassis? Well, to actually go ahead and tell you that, the Surface Pro 7 Plus is actually using a very similar screen uh, as the Surface Pro 8, and it's actually a little bit thinner for the most part allowing it for the battery to actually be a little thicker and have a little bit more power. How much? Well, I mean, anywhere between five to 10%. Not, you know, a deal breaker, you know, to actually really convince you to buy one over the other, but it's definitely an upgrade for sure. However, there are definitely some more details. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up Task Manager on both of them over here. Now, so both of these models are actually the, uh, the Core i7, pretty much a top of the line model you can possibly get, with the exception of uh, maybe a little bit more memory and also the exception that you can probably get a bigger hard drive space on both of them. Both of them are pretty much equally matched. Uh, Core i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and uh, 256 gig SSD. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and bring this forward. You can actually see this is running a Core i7 10th generation, 1065 G7 CPU quad core with an extra four threads, so a total of eight little squares there. And this is running 16 gigs of RAM, which obviously you're able to get an eight gigabyte model and even a four gigabyte model. I'm not sure if there's a 32 gigabyte model for the seven, uh, Surface Pro 7. You can also definitely get more uh, SSD space up to 512, I believe, maybe even up to a gig. So that's also available for you as well too. So that's your Surface Pro 7 right here. Surface Pro 7 Plus is using an 11th generation Intel Core i7 1165G7 CPU base. Frequency looks to be about 2.8 gigahertz, which is definitely higher than the 1.3 we're seeing here, but you can actually see both CPUs seem to surpass that speed at some point, particularly when you're plugged into AC power. And I've actually seen speeds on this particular tablet hit up to even three and a half to four, gigabyte, four gigahertz in speeds. This one I've definitely seen, the Surface Pro 7, I've definitely seen hit about three gigahertz as well too. So don't think you're actually getting a max speed of 1.3, that's just basically a base speed. Many CPUs these days now have your clock speed, your core clock speed, and something significantly higher, particularly if you're gonna be using a single thread, even if only temporarily. Another little difference I wanted to point out that's really important between both tablets is the GPU. Let me go ahead and click on that on both of them. So let's start with this one first. The Surface Pro 7 is actually using an Iris Plus graphics. And you can definitely game on this. I actually have chosen not really to game too much on tablets, unless, uh, of course, you know, my, one of my nephews wants to grab me and play old-fashioned Plants vs. Zombies or some other little game on it. But me, personally, I actually don't really play games for the most part on this. I definitely do watch some videos, and I probably will be using Photoshop, and then possibly Premiere Pro to some degree. I do have a workstation for that, so I mean, I don't really plan to do that either for the most part. But running multiple applications and whatnot is definitely a plus. Having a video or two playing in the background and still being able to just do some other stuff is always, uh, some degree, a really good quality of multitasking is always in demand here. And of course, a good video card is uh, definitely, you know, always appreciated in this case. Now, obviously you're not having anything crazy like a 3080 Ti or something like that, but this is actually still a pretty good uh, graphics card over the traditional Intel HD graphics like the Surface Pro 2 and 3, uh, Surface Go 2 or 3 actually have and you know, may just only have its limitations and may not get you so far. So that's one little thing here. And to show you what graphics the Surface Pro 7 Plus actually have, this actually has the Iris XE uh, graphics. It's actually a really good way to pronounce this. I'm not gonna even try, I'm just gonna say uh, XE. And this is actually a very similar graphics card that the Surface Pro 8 has. So you really see that the Surface Pro 7 Plus, generally speaking, is actually taking the step up to the 8 and moving away from the uh, older model 7. 
Not to say that basically they don't have a lot in common as well too, but you can definitely see a lot of the upgrades that the Surface Pro 7 Plus has and offers has been absorbed and simulated by the Surface Pro 8 since obviously it does appeal to a lot of people. Mentioning the XE graphics, I have noticed uh, quite a bit of an improvement in terms of watching videos, uh, rendering stuff and whatnot. Don't expect a big break, breakthrough, you know, kind of an improvement, but it's definitely a more, much more advanced uh, little card right there. So working together in synergy with a uh, newer generation CPU and more efficient, it's definitely a no-brainer and definitely a winner for you. One big plus that really stands out on the Surface Pro 7 Plus is obviously the option to go ahead and remove and upgrade your SSD using that little trap door on the back here. I'll go ahead and demonstrate, to, I'll demonstrate that here for you in just a moment. Pull your device right down here and you'll see that little tray over here that you can use a basic little screwdriver over here and remove that SSD. This is something yet again the Surface Pro 8 has also absorbed but was also available on the Surface Pro X as well too. Not to mention, right up here, you do also still continue to have your micro SD slot, which is actually a big plus as well too. Some people may choose not to use it, but the option to actually still have it is really nice considering that's no longer available on the Pro 8. That being said, let's see just how much uh, the removal SSD can actually uh, compare with an SSD that's actually built right onto the motherboard itself. So let's go ahead and just run a little bit of a benchmark over here just to actually compare them both and let's see how the numbers turn out. I actually have run, ran this, uh, this uh, benchmark before on the original review videos, but go ahead and just for comparison's sake, let's go ahead and put them side by side and see how they turn out. So before the benchmark test is even though we can already see there's a little bit of a difference. Read speeds seem to be somewhat comparable. Uh, maybe uh, the your Surface Pro 7 is about 300 megabytes a, fa a second faster in terms of read speed, so that's definitely a bit of a difference. Write speed seems to be a big humongous difference right over here. You can actually see that the write speed on the Surface Pro 7 is around 600 megabytes faster a second than the Surface Pro 7 Plus. And the only thing I can really tell you is obviously because the SSD is actually built onto the chipset motherboard itself inside this tablet, it's probably going to be more optimized than ideal. However, that being said, being that this is removable, you can always go ahead and try to get your hands on more quality, higher speed in terms of read and write speeds, SSD for this, which is something I'm planning to do. Definitely planning to get my hands on a one terabyte, which is gonna be much cheaper than purchasing this model in the one terabyte model. Who knows how many hundreds and hundreds of bucks more that would have been. And uh, I would definitely go ahead and try to do a benchmark once I actually get my hands on that. So here are your numbers right here. Now, is this anything to really concern you? No, I mean, you're basically getting like 2.5K read, 1.5K uh, write, and over here you're getting about just a little over 2K read and about 1K write. Very excellent numbers indeed, either way. I actually have been using this tablet, the Surface Pro 7 Plus, over the last several days quite often, and I've actually noticed just an increase in uh, speeds and whatnot. Now, if you're going to be migrating a lot of files, like gigabytes and gigabytes of stuff, even, uh, you know, let's say once I get that terabyte drive in there and start copying some 4K videos, yes, you'll definitely start seeing a little bit of a throttle neck there because there's a, the difference here, basically, it's going on. Something to die over? No, definitely not. Uh, one gigabyte a second is uh, definitely still a very high speed, but I'm looking forward to actually seeing higher speeds beyond that as well. Before I go ahead and proceed, just jumping back to the topic of battery life, uh, I actually did not have this particular tablet, the Plus uh, 7 Plus here, uh, to full charge. I did have the 7 to full charge, maybe around 98%, give or take, since obviously turning it on, setting up, and everything probably sucked uh, 1 or 2% away. Same thing with this device. But I have actually been using this, and I actually let it charge up to about, I would say around 80, 82, or 83% at some point, just before I started this video. So you can definitely see a little bit of a difference. This device is already down to about, you know, already down 10, 11%, while the Surface Pro 7 Plus is down maybe about 5 or 6 it has taken me a while. I did actually go ahead and play with it and use it all week. And basically what I do with uh, this particular tablet device is I leave Outlook open. I leave uh, an internet browser window open as well too. And I just put each device to sleep, basically just by hitting the power button and you'll immediately see it just goes to sleep just by doing that. And then you just wake it right back up. So you know, obviously you're not killing the battery all the way. Even though if you walk away for about five minutes, it's gonna go into some sort of sleep mode anyway. And then once I turn it back on, I check my email, refreshes about every five minutes. So it does use up a little bit more juice for doing that. 
And I've actually been able to use a tablet all week long with it maybe just dropping a little before or under 50%. But then again, I wasn't really doing too much on the tablet other than just maybe looking at emails and of course checking emails and maybe typing a couple of stuff. Obviously when using this a little bit more thoroughly, responding to YouTube comments and whatnot, listening to music at the same time, battery life definitely uses quite a bit more. I do have these both at around uh, 75 to 80% brightness right now at this time. Let's go ahead and take a look actually. Bring this up here, you'll see it's about yeah, this is about 85%, 85 brightness, and I'm pretty sure it's gonna be about the same over here. I usually keep it around 85, anything higher than that, and you're gonna immediately start seeing that these screens are just gonna literally kind of blind you to some degree once you have it open, especially if you're in the dark and uh, you know, just happen to be using this when all the lights are out. Spoke about a lot of differences so far. Let's go speak about a little bit about the similarities. Both of them still have the 12 and a half or so inch uh, screen here. Both of them pretty much have the same uh, amount of bezel around here. No, the Surface Pro 8 definitely does have a bigger screen, hitting around 13 inches or so. Both of them have the same resolution screen here, about 2736 by 1824. Both of them actually matched up here. Obviously, both of them I zoomed at 200% here, so the icons don't appear teeny tiny. You really just can't see anything. And I gotta be honest, the brightness on both of them appear to be almost on par for the most part. I'm sure there's a little bit of a nits difference in there somewhere considering this is actually a slightly different screen than this one. So something to keep in mind as well too, that, that basically that thinner screen does allow for a larger battery to be installed. Some other similarities you do have are basically the models and the specs you can actually get your hands on. Base model for this device over here is probably gonna be your Core i5, four gigabyte with I believe 128 gigabyte model, which I believe is very similar to here, but I actually have seen the Surface Pro 7 available with a Core i3 eight gigabyte, uh, 128 gigabyte model as well too. So you can actually get your hands on a four gigabyte model on the Surface Pro 7. You may not actually see that on the Surface Pro uh, 7 Plus. Now, before I go ahead and proceed there, I just wanna go ahead and remind everybody that the Surface Pro 7 Plus was actually more geared to be a corporate or maybe an educational device. Not really so much a consumer device that's gonna be sold in stores. Now, as I mentioned before, and definitely have been mentioned in uh, one or two comments here and there, you definitely can't find this uh, retail uh, in stores and whatnot to some degree. You will definitely have the option to find it also in the retail box as opposed to the brown box that I actually got my hands on this device here. But like I said, it's a little harder than if you actually went to a store, like uh, even go to Best Buy or Amazon even, and try to look up a Surface Pro 7 Plus as opposed to the 7 itself. If you do go to Microsoft's website now, obviously since the 7 is slowly being phased out, and now for make way for the 8, the 7 Plus is available, but you'll see you only have, as far as I know, my last time I checked there fairly recently, I only see the Core i3 and i5 models, eight gigabytes of RAM, and I believe 128 gigabytes of SSD. Now the SSD is irrelevant because you can always upgrade it, but that's pretty much it. You can't even get your hands on these 16 gigabyte models similar to what I got over here. And, but if you actually do switch over to the Microsoft Store from a corporate point of view, if you're actually buying it for business, you'll start to see this particular model here as well too, bundled with a touch type keyboard, not even the signature keyboards, the touch type keyboard. Harping on similarities as well too, both devices will use the same touch type or signature type keyboards, and also using the same keyboards available on the Pro 6 and the Pro 5 as well too. So if you have an older keyboard and want to actually use it on this one, you definitely can. I actually introduced a uh, Alcatara ice in color ice blue uh, signature type keyboard um, that I was using originally with my Surface Pro 7. And of course, it is definitely working of my Surface Pro 7 Plus without any issues or even drivers installation. Definitely went over a couple of differences and similarities between both devices. I want to actually go ahead and mention another thing here. Um, some of you may be wondering, um, I did get my hands on the Surface Pro 8, but why did I get my hands on a Surface Pro 7 Plus other than just to actually do a review on it, but actually use it for myself? Very simple. Um, I actually did really enjoy using the Surface Pro 8, which is actually intended for a family member, and plan to get my hands on another one as well too. One thing that I definitely wanted to point out both devices do have the same two USB ports available here. Uh, you have your Surface Pro Type A, USB port Type A, and uh, your USB Type C right over here, which is the same thing the Pro, uh, Pro 7 Plus actually has. That being said, 
I actually did want the tablet to have a um, USB type A, and I believe there's many people out there that would agree with me. Well, I definitely do see uh, type C being the future. Um, it's a little difficult to actually go ahead and type and plug in a external, like a traditional USB hard drive from Seagate, Western Digital, and all those little portable little hard drives that come in one, two terabytes, four terabytes, even now five terabytes as well too. I actually have one myself to back up movies and whatnot, whatnot into it. So plugging that into either of these two tablets, very simple, just connect it. Surface Pro 8, you'll actually have to use a little adapter, kind of like a splitter that basically splits a USB-C Type-C connection into about three or even four. I actually have a three dongle, a three port dongle, uh, one of them being USB 3 and the other being USB um, 2.0s. And that's how you go ahead and plug in your hard drive. Now that's, you know, if I'm gonna be copying a lot of files, no big deal. But let's say for example, I'm gonna plug in anything else, a USB thumb drive, a maybe even a wireless mouse, or something like that. I actually prefer to actually have the old traditional uh, type A, but also a type C connection as well too. And that's why I pretty much am using the Pro 7 Plus a little bit more often. That's not to say the Surface Pro 8 uh, is useless or anything. Remember, it can actually use Windows 11 and it can actually use Windows 10 as well too. If you're not a fan of Windows 11, you can definitely downgrade or upgrade whichever way you choose to, to look at it and uh, switch over to Windows 10. I have a video on that as well too. I'll put a link in the description below as well too. So that's actually my personal uh, preference, so to speak. And that's why this particular device here, while also absorbing some of the pluses, again, pun intended, uh, of the Surface Pro 8, such as the removal SSD, the better battery life, and slightly ever so slightly better uh, speakers, uh, 11th generation, newer generation uh, Intel CPU, and of course, um, slightly better graphics card, which is somewhere halfway between the seven and the eight. So if you're actually looking to get your hands on this particular device, and mind you, I did actually get this device here for a bargain. So if you really wanna get your hands on a uh, seven, but maybe you want a couple more options, you might actually wanna consider the seven plus, especially if you wanna shell out over a grand that the Surface Pro 8 is currently costing. Though I have actually seen the base model um, be available for maybe around 899 to 950 sometimes uh, Amazon and the Microsoft Store themselves sells them for a little cheaper. Price seems to fluctuate, but I was I believe the base model retail at release was around 1099, which is uh, definitely, as one YouTuber said, you know, it don't even know if that really justifies the base model. The sale bringing it down to 8999 was nice. 899 or even as low as 850 have you even seen is definitely a much better deal. However, if you don't have that option right now or you prefer the seven, seven plus is definitely an option you might wanna look into. However, harder to get your hands on unless you're going to Amazon or even eBay or some other website as well too. Uh, like I said, if you actually are looking to get it from Microsoft directly, you might wanna see if you can uh, purchase it as a business customer because your options are gonna be very slim and you know, I definitely did, I definitely wanted the 16 gigabyte model myself, particularly a Core i7. So that in mind, um, that's part particular little point of view there when it comes to the, you know, whether you should get your hands on the Service Pro 7 or 7 Plus. Uh, you definitely can weigh the both the cons and the pros of it. Costs, so to speak. Obviously, Surface Pro 7s have uh, prices have become coming down. Now the 8s becoming more mainstream and whatnot. So even like what this particular device, a 16 gigabyte model uh, Surface Pro uh, 7, whether iCore i5 or i7 used to go at least eight to 900 bucks. Now it's actually going to around anywhere between six, seven to 750 or so. So might be a good time to actually get your hands on one of these if you really did enjoy one of them. And if you did, take a look at the 7 Plus, might actually be for you. As usual, I want to go ahead and just actually play an old video here. This is basically a review of a little product I actually have here, taking a walk in the park, and just go ahead and show you, have both of them playing simultaneously, and just uh, play a few moments of this video over here.
Both those videos are actually playing in 1080p, but I actually want to go ahead and point out that these uh, 7 Plus, because as a newer generation and faster core, uh, base core, uh, core speed, um, did actually play a 1440p and 4K video p uh, 4K videos in uh, YouTube without a hitch. I did actually notice occasionally, depending on what you're actually looking at. Uh, 1440 and 4K videos will actually hiccup a little bit ever so slightly when using the Pro 7, particularly on battery power. Um, obviously, both devices are going to be a little bit clocked down just a tad bit because it's running on battery. Um, but like I said, you know, it seems like the performance on the Pro 7 uh, Plus is uh, obviously taking advantage of that 11th generation CPU as well, too. Both of them actually do have the little fan on top as well, too. I can feel a little bit of a uh, a little bit of a uh, you know ventilation coming through the little vents. I believe the Core i7 models have it. I'm not sure if the Core i5 models actually do, but you know it's always a chance they do as well too. Um, not something you see on the Go 2 and the Go 3 models though. Anyway, I hope everyone found this video uh, useful and gave you a little bit of an insight on both devices to a degree. By all means, go ahead and shoot a like and subscribe, but definitely go ahead and let me know if you have uh, any questions or comments regarding these Pro 7 or even these Pro 7 Plus, as I said, this is actually a device that's not really available in the consumer world, so you may not actually be able to ever see it for the most part unless you actually check it out on certain online retailers or, and whatnot, or even try to get, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lesser base model from Microsoft themselves. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. Thanks again for watching, everyone, and as always, stay safe. Take care, everyone.